Hello, everybody. Uh, this is my asynchronous lesson for athletics. Uh, this is for the people who, for whatever reason, could not log in during the class period. Now, that said, you can always watch them again. I know this is athletics. It's not as big a deal. But um, if you'd like, you can, you can always watch it again and in your other classes or if you have me for IPC, I'll use these so they can be watched the first time through or in review. So just in case you missed our class, I'm gonna log in here to our men's soccer page. Okay, and just go over a few things with you. Uh, I have an introductory slide here. And anytime in my class, if it comes up with this present, that means you're not actually in the Google slide presentation and you want to be in the Google slide presentation. Just hit present. Okay, and there it is. Coach McGobbin in soccer. This is, like I said, an introductory video. This is nothing, you know, like in your other classes, they might give you more specific instructions. Uh, here's my family. Uh, this is actually one Christmas recently. We went to Puerto Vallarta because we wanted to be somewhere where it was warm for Christmas. Now, I noticed there, there is one person missing. Uh, I had a daughter who could not make it to that trip she could not get off work so this is Deanna I, I put her in this picture because she didn't like the idea that she wasn't in the other one and no one will get to see her so and, and by the way it's, it's usually here at the start of the year that that I have pictures of my family uh, click on this picture and you can watch my introductory video I'm not going to go ahead and do it now you can do that on your own but this is where it's located okay uh, one thing about my family, we all enjoy going to the beach. We're all beach people. Uh, we like going to Mazatlan, Mexico. That's where this picture was taken. So uh, that's the one thing we all have in common. We all love going to the beach. Now, everyone speaks Spanish, except me. Um, there's a reason for that. One, I was born in the United States and the only person I knew growing up who spoke another language besides English, ironically, was my mother, who speaks Italian and several other languages. But another reason I probably never learned to speak Spanish is I grew up with a speech impediment. It was hard enough to get me to speak English so that people could understand me. Um, I was actually considered special ed because of my speech impediment from kindergarten through the seventh grade. So in the seventh grade, I finally passed a speech test. I had to go in and talk and they asked me to say things and articulate things. And I finally got released from special ed. They, can, they figured I'd learned how to overcome my impediment. And I no longer had, you know, and by the way, I, I was always in normal classes. I just got pulled out once or twice a week to go work with a speech therapist. And I didn't like it because it usually meant I missed PE. You know, I, back, you know, in elementary school, when you go on the playground, I usually miss that because I was with my speech therapist. Uh, now, one thing that is unique to me, uh, I enjoy going to the mountains. Uh, this is me this spring in Wyoming. Uh, notice I'm the only one there. <laughs> no one else uh, enjoys going to the mountains, but uh, my brother lives up here. And uh, I have a nephew who also lives in the mountains of Wyoming, and I go there whenever I can. I, especially in the summer, I love hiking in the mountains. I, I don't climb much anymore, but uh, I definitely do a lot of hiking in the mountains when I can. I, uh, a lot of people found this interesting. I shared this last year, and I didn't think the kids would really care. And then later, they all told me this was the favorite part of my presentation. Uh, both of my parents are still living. They are both past 90 years old. They have now been married for 71 years. They got married 
in June of 1949, and they are still with us. Uh, my father, he served in the Army for 30 years, uh, from 1945 to 1975, and he later worked as a security guard. Um, he retired from that and, and then did an, another job for a while after he'd retired from being a security guard. I mean, first he retired from the Army. So he retired twice. Uh, my mother is from Italy. Uh, she has an interesting history with her languages. She grew up, or growing up, excuse me, she spoke Italian and Slavic. In school in Italy, she learned German and French. Uh, she'd be the first to point out if she was here, she learned German as it is spoken in Austria and in Southern Germany. Um, not the German like they speak in Berlin, they're, they're two different dialects. So when she came to the United States and learned English, that was her fifth language. Okay, so uh, at one time she was fluent in five languages. I, of course, she's older now and dementia is set, setting in. I think now she can only speak English and Italian, but I remember as a child she could speak five languages. She's very, very gifted uh, with, with languages, kind of the opposite of me. I'm not sure where I got that speech impediment from. It might have been because I was born premature, and that's what they expected all along, because none of my children and none of my grandchildren have it. Uh, photography is one of my hobbies. So here's a picture I took. It took three different trips to the Grand Teton Mountains to get it right. Had to figure out what time of year to be there to get the effect I wanted and what time of day to get there. It's called Lake Solitude because the mountains protect it from the wind and there's this glass effect and the, the water is so smooth it reflects everything like a mirror as you can see. So it, it took my third summer going up to figure out the time of day I needed to be there and the time of year I needed to be there. And uh, I had to camp out overnight because this mountain's fairly isolated so I could get up in the morning and, and get that picture. That's still one of the most, one of my most favorite pictures. Uh, my favorite soccer player is Moses Hernandez. I actually taught him at Siegelville High School. So uh, I've known Moses for a while now. Uh, he did play for FC Dallas for a while, you know, for a couple of years. Uh, he was in their youth program, and he was one of their homegrown players. He played for Co in Costa Rica for a while, and then after uh, playing in Costa Rica, he came back to the United States. He played for San Antonio FC and uh, Rayo OKC, which are in the A-League. He is currently playing for a club, Antigua GFC, in Guatemala. And I'm not sure if he's appeared in games. I do know he has practiced with and been on the roster for the Guatemala national team a couple times. So he, he's a, a very accomplished soccer player. I did not coach him. I was, uh, one, I was coaching girls at that time. And two, back then I didn't necessarily coach soccer every year. So I, I did not coach him, but he was in my class as a student and we're still in touch. Uh, if he's in the United States while soccer season uh, is going on, he may come and speak to us. I've asked him to do that. He agreed to do that if he's in the country. But like I said, he, he may be in Guatemala. Uh, one interesting thing about me here in Dallas at the Cotton Bowl, uh, I attended the 1994 World Cup. I saw the game Brazil versus the Netherlands. Brazil won three to two. And uh, all the goals were scored in the second half. I, I remember that. Uh, I do have pictures, but they didn't have digital cameras back then. So actually, this is not my picture. This is one I got off the internet. But uh, it's still my highlight. I like to tell people that uh, I was at the 1994 World Cup. Uh, hopefully, I get a chance to go to a World Cup again. I know the tickets are a lot more expensive now. Uh, tickets weren't that expensive back then. You know, for 40 bucks, you could go see a World Cup game. Uh, I have a feeling second time around, it'll cost a lot more. Uh, my favorite team is Manchester United. Now, interestingly, 
interestingly enough, uh, when I was growing up, there wasn't much soccer on TV. So how did I find out about Manchester United? It was actually in a song. And uh, the singer had this song. He, he mentions Manchester United. Now, I didn't watch a lot of soccer, but I, I read about it in magazines and sporting magazines. And sometimes my relatives would, would send me videos. Like I said, my mom's from Italy. And uh, relatives would send us videos of the Italian soccer league, though. They were not, not the English Premier League. But still, even before I'd ever seen them play, uh, I was a Manchester United fan. Uh, when they did start, you know, showing them on television, I like, you know, gigs, players like that. Of course, what I've really, really stuck with me from Manchester United all these years is my favorite coach is Alex Ferguson. I have read all his books several times, and uh, I really enjoy his style of coaching, and I've always modeled my coaching of soccer and other sports after him. Uh, he, he's been a big influence on me coaching wise. Okay. Uh, my family is split between Chivas and Tigres. Uh, my spouse is from Mexico. And so my kids follow not enthusiastically, but they do follow the Mexican league and they are aware of the teams and, some of my kids and grandkids like Chivas and other like Tigres being in Durango or kind of halfway between the two of them. Uh, none of them like Santos Laguna. So uh, they're, that's more what my family likes. None of them picked up Manchester United from me. Uh, probably the most interesting thing about me concerning soccer is uh, my great uncle Nereo Rocco, that's a picture of him there. Uh, people have told me I kind of look like him. Uh, that's him when he was younger. He played for a club which still exists called Triestina. My mother is from Trieste, Italy, and they do have a soccer team there. Uh, currently, they're in third division or Serie C. And uh, they've never been a, a big, big club, but they've always played in Serie B or Serie C. And he played, I think, for 10 years on the club. And as far as we know, he is the only player from that club who, while a member of the club, played for the Italian national team. And that was in 1934. He was on the Italian national team that year. Uh, maybe other Trieste team, maybe other players from the club have gone on to – bigger clubs and then played from the national team on those clubs. But he was on the Italian national team while he was playing for Triestina. It was the only club he ever played for. And by the way, there weren't a lot of transfers and things back then. Uh, soccer was not business yet. Now, one of the reasons I bring this up, I found out and someone contacted my mother about this when they built the new stadium in Trieste, which was finished in 1992, they named it after him at Stadio Nereo Rocco because he was, he is the only player we are aware of that ever played for the Italian national team while representing the club. It seats about 24,000. You know, it's a small club. Most of the players are local, but I, I found that very interesting that uh, there was a stadium named after that. Uh, by the way, I don't remember meeting him in person. Uh, I did when I was like three or four years old. And quite honestly, I don't remember that. I do remember talking to him on the phone a few times. Uh, he passed away when I was 11 years old. But I, I do remember talking to him on the phone a couple times. He'd call from Italy and he'd want to speak to everybody. And I'd get on the phone and talk with Uncle Nareo a little bit. He didn't speak much English, so there, there wasn't much we could say, but he would say hello to me and ask me how I was doing and, and so on and so forth. Uh, one thing I want to do this year is, uh, from what I've heard about the team, and I've heard good things, I called coaches that I know that you guys played against last year and the year before, and I want to play the 4-2-3-1. 
Uh, that's going to take some discipline. I, I believe we can do it. I'm even going to get some colored, you know, mesh jerseys so we can be color coded about who needs to communicate with who on the field, you know, practice that. Because one thing about the 4231 folks, you've got to know where you are. You got to know which players you need to communicate with a lot. Um, because the disadvantage on the 4231, if you cannot do that, if you're not sure where everyone is and what everyone's responsibilities are, you can get burned. Because sometimes we're only going to leave three people in the goalie down there on defense. So we're going to need some guys, not only some guys with pace who can run fast, not only some guys with stamina who can run all the game, we're going to need some guys with some soccer IQ and know how to play the game and formation because played right. It's a great formation played wrong. It's it's, it can get you burned and, and there's a disadvantage to it. So I especially want to play this formation on offense. And by the way, as you can see, drop these two players back and so on. It, it easily converts to a four, four, two on defense. But I don't want to use 4-4-2 too much on offense, okay? Uh, let's work together and have a good year. You know, my, our slogan for us this year is Fast and Furious. I've put Fast and Furious posters up in the locker room. You know, that's how you play. By the fast, I mean pace. I mean quickness. By the furious, you know, I mean people who have stamina, they're still going strong at the end of the game. I mean, people who are, they want to be the first to the, a ball. You know, they know how to pass well. They're solid on defense. Uh, I'm gonna, I've said this before, and I will be saying it all year. It's usually the team that's running stronger at the end of the game who wins, at least in a close game. Okay, it's the team that still has gas in the tank with 20 minutes left that usually wins the game. All right, so uh, let's just have a great year. Uh, make sure you, you comment on this so I know that that's kind of your attendance. I do have to take attendance in this virtual world. So just leave a comment and just say, I was here. All right, uh, I'll have something up every day that you can comment on. Uh, another thing I'm doing, and I, I will pull that up. Here's my welcome slide. You've already seen it. The only thing on there that you haven't seen, I didn't play my welcome video for you. I figure you can watch that on your own. And there's where you need to comment. Just to say, hey, coach, I was here today. All right. And by the way, I have two assistant coaches that I'm very happy with, uh, Coach Bethel and Coach Maneras. And sometimes they'll be the ones doing the video. You know, um, it's not always going to be me. I've made them co-teachers of this class. Uh, also, one thing I want to do, and again, I want you to watch this on your own. Click right there. There's an example of a great goal I saw in the English Premier League last year. And I want all of you, okay, I want all of you to, to post some of your favorite goals, some of your favorite players. All right, this is how we get to know each other. Here, here's one. You'll see one of my favorite goals. Um, here, Coach Moneras has already posted one. But I challenge all of you to post one too, okay, and watch them all. Well, let's watch each other. We'll see what each other likes. See, see what everybody, who their favorite players are, who see what their favorite team is. You know, see how they want to play soccer. That's, that's that kind of sharing. You know, it's what it's all about. And uh, we'll share other things. This is just the first. This is the first day. We'll, we'll share other things too. And I'll have I'll put things like this up all year long, even when we go back to school in the classroom. I'll, I'll be posting videos. I'll have stuff I want everyone to, to throw in there, you know, what they want to share. 
so that's pretty much it for this, you know, first day of school. Um, some of you will be watching it, if you're watching it, you know, on the same day. Some of you be watching Tuesday and some of you watching Wednesday. But Thursday and Friday, I'll have something else up. I'll either have another video up, something for you to comment on, a, a video maybe I got off the internet to watch. Uh, I'm going to post an emo emoji classroom where I have things to click on. I'm looking for good things about the 4231 formation to post on there that might be useful for you. So, hey, I'm looking forward to seeing you all. I'm looking forward to getting to know all of you. And I'm looking forward to have having a great soccer season. I'll, I'll see you later.